You're listening to KEXP at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming on KEXP.org. And today, streaming live video on KEXP's Facebook page, our dear friend Josh Tillman, a.k.a. Father John Misty, is with me in the studio. Welcome. Hi. Would you like to introduce your friend over there? This is John Titterington on piano. John, welcome. It's so great to have you here. Pure Comedy, the new album, and so excited to have you playing here at the Paramount Theater in Seattle tonight. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time to stop by. Of course, always. What are you going to do for us? We're going to run down the first four tracks on my deeply polarizing new album. Beautiful. Yeah. New album. That new album called Pure Comedy out on Sub Pop Records. Going to start with the title track? That's right. The comedy of man starts like this. Our brains are way too big for our mother's hips And so nature, she devised this alternative We emerge half-formed and hope whoever greets us on the other end Is kind enough fill us in and babies that's pretty much how it's been ever since now the miracle of birth leaves a few issues to address like say that half of us are periodically iron deficient so somebody's gotta go kill something While I look after the kids I do it myself, but what? Are you gonna get this thing? It's milk He says as soon as he gets back from the hunt We can switch it's hard not to fall in love with something so helpless Ladies, I hope we don't end up regretting this Comedy Now that's what I call start to believe they're at the center of everything and some all powerful being endowed this horror show with meaning all their religions are the best they worship themselves yet they're totally obsessed in zombies, celestial virgins, magic tricks These unbelievable outfits They get terribly upset When you question their sacred texts Written by a woman hating epileptics Their languages just serve to confuse them Their confusion somehow makes them more sure They build fortunes, poisoning their offspring And hand out prizes when someone patents a cure where did they find these goons they elected to rule them? What makes these clowns they idolize so remarkable? These mammals are hell-bent on fashioning new gods So they can go on being 
godless animals oh, 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 that just forever see and how's this for irony their idea of being free is a prison of beliefs that they never ever have to leave them feel alive is the struggle to survive but the only thing that they request is something to numb the pain with until there's nothing human left just random matter Suspended in the dark I hate to say it But each other's all we've got Whew. Father John Misty live on KEXP. Pure Comedy, the new album out on Sub Pop Records. Father John Misty playing tonight at the Paramount Theater in Seattle. My heart kind of skipped a beat there. <laughs> It's so wonderful to see you performing these songs live. Tillman and Titterington live in the KEXP studios today. Before you play another song, I want to uh, ask you a couple of questions because I have so many. <laughs> um, I absolutely love your albums, and you touch on so many topics in all of them, but I, when I sit back and think about the three records, I feel like there is a theme of love running through all of them. Obviously on the last one, you were talking about the intricacies of love on I Love You Honey Bear, so maybe a little bit more direct. Yeah. And there's a lot of global topics that come up in this new record, Pure Comedy, but love is the thread I feel that binds them all together. And I'm just curious what was going on for you and what your takeaway is for this record and for your listeners. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, that really is. I mean, it's, you know, between, it's, you don't get like a brain wipe between albums and start from scratch, you know. They're, they're all kind of part of the same conversation. And with the last record, it had started as this neurotic, like thinking about love as this like ir irrational, abstract kind of principle or, or, I mean, principle doesn't do it justice, but just this thing that's in our, in our lives, you know, that is somehow non-human that, that, that we have to reckon with and try to make sense of. And the more I thought about it, the more it occurred to me that l love is our creation, you know, it's, or, or it's something that came out of, came out of us. It should be innate, you know, and that it really, like that song, for example, is, is about love being the substance of survival. And that if we don't love each other, you know, with the goofy, like, caveman scene, you know, it's like, there's really, um, there's not much about the human condition that is engineered for survival. You know, I mean, we're like these absurd, hairless creatures with soft skulls and, you know, we need a lot of attention. Um, and we're very unique in that way. And, you know, that song's just, I think, it, for, you know, what I was trying to get at was, was that these counterfeits that start to emerge when we forget that, when we ignore that thing that we just, 
that what we need above all else is to be recognized by one another. Um, then these like really grotesque, bizarre counterfeits start to emerge, and they and they are like they are comical to some extent. You know, if you take a far enough, I mean, they're made even funnier by how how sac how 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 big of sacred cows they are. By how you know, I mean, I hate, by by how angry we get when you poke holes in them, you know, because they're meant to stand in for something that we really, really need, you know? But we could eliminate the middleman. You talk about being angry and that we're not engineered for survival, and you have a very wry sense of humor, but I would say you're an optimist. Would you agree? Um, yeah, I mean, I have... <clears throat> yeah, I don't think I would make music if I, if I wasn't. You know what I mean? Um, like, I don't really believe that in cynical music... You know, I think music is, it's not a, it's not like a think piece or something, you know, it's not like a screed, it's not, it's supposed to be a space where, you know, I mean, all of these feelings of isolation and confusion or, and whatever, I mean, to me, it's pretty self-evident that those are things that we all experience and, and music is kind of this space where you can give it like, dignity and kind of like roll around in it and, and really feel it, you know, and have it articulated. And uh, I mean, I'm talking about this like I have a lab coat on or something, but you kind um, of do. yeah, I sort of have like <laughs> this, for those of you at home, I'm wearing like a, a Riddler costume. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Father John Misty live on KEXP, and you're just about to play the song Total Entertainment, and a minute ago you said, you know, I, didn't, I wouldn't make music if I weren't an optimist. And in the little film that you made um, for the record, you talked about entertainment versus art, and clearly your shows are very entertaining. You're entertaining mm. um, as an individual. I know that you're not always the person we talk to one-on-one -on -one as you are in interviews, but... Mm. Um. Oh, yeah, I mean, so I'm, I'm, I'm a goof. Like, I'm <laughs> just a total goof. Um, and, you know, I mean, this... This, uh, as people are, like, driving off the road because they're so bored, um, I, I... You always say that, but that's never <laughs> true. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just something I had to think about this year, you know? Especially given what's going, you know, given that we have like a reality TV star, um, you know, president who entertained his way into the, uh, you know, the highest office in the land. And I, that really freaked me out, you know, like on, on some, not on an intellectual level, just on, on some just kind of, it, it just really, really disturbed me. And I had, and, I, and as someone who also entertains and goes around spouting off his ideas and, and whatever, it, it, it just, it was, it was disturbing. And I think I had to clarify a distinction, you know? I mean, it's, it, it is a little insufferable to go around saying like, I'm an artist, I'm not an entertainer. But I, but I think that you know, art just, if we don't, as a culture, if we don't, if, if art is just old stuff in a museum, you know what I mean? Like, if, if, it's, if it is uh, inaccessible and, and, uh, and angry, I, I don't know, I'm not saying this very well, but I just needed to, I needed to create a distinction in order to move forward because I was like, if I'm just, if this is just entertainment, and that, that's a question I've been asking in these records you know, through all of these records, like in learning to love the war, you know, like try not to think about all the oil it takes to make a record. It's like, what am I doing this for, you know? And um, I think that's, I think that if you're an entertainer, you, that's a very, it's, it's a really, that is a really dark question. It's a really, but if you are aiming for something else, that question is like the humming dynamo at the center of everything you do, you know? And it keeps you, accountable to yourself and to the culture and, and whatever else, you know. Oops. And on that note, 
Total Entertainment. I'll play an incredibly <laughs> stupid song. By Father John Misty. We're live in the KEXP studios tonight. Father John Misty plays at the Paramount Theater, and we're streaming live video at KEXP's Facebook page. Bedding Taylor Swift Every night inside the Oculus Rift After Mr. and the Mrs. Finish dinner and the dishes Now the future's definition Is so much higher than it was last year It's like the images have all become real And someone's living my life for me out in the me No, can you believe how far we've come In the new way Freedom to have what you want In the new age we'll all be entertained Rich your poor Channels are all the same You're a star now, baby, so dry your tears Just like them Waking up from the nightmare na 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 Come on We're live in the KEXP studios with Father John Misty, the new album, Pure Comedy, out on Sub Pop Records. Josh, it's very evident that you care very much about music, um, as evidenced by the quality of all of your records. And you have um, put together such a gorgeous album here with Pure Comedy. Right in the middle of the record, there's a 13-minute <laughs> plus song, Leaving L.A. with these gorgeous strings. I'm curious what the writing and recording of this record was like. I had heard that you had been working on that song for three years or more. Yeah, and on, yeah, the album take is actually the first time I ever played it all the way through. Ooh, and that was just kind of this one take um, thing. I, I just knew, you know, I, I think... I think on some subconscious level, I, I knew that I wanted that, wanted to have that, if this was gonna be on the record, it was gonna have to be like a real, uh, like it was gonna have to be the, it was gonna have to be the song instead of a version of the song or a take of the song. And so, yeah, I, I held off on really ever like kind of playing it all the way through or anything. Um, and the for, yeah, it, it's, it, I think the, the purpose that it serves in the record is, is like, 
it's okay to talk about, it's one thing to talk about capital P people, you know, to talk about people as an abstraction or, or, you know, us as a race or a whatever, you know, species or whatever. Um, but people, but human beings are, I mean, we, we're, it is our, you know, that song is like, it's kind of gross, you know, like I, I, I wanted it, but I wanted by the end of that song, I wanted there to be like nothing left, like nothing, no mystique about me, no, like, um, I wanted it to, you know, to be fully vulnerable, you know, as, uh, and so I guess in sort of like a counterpoint to, to my own, you know, like I just wanted the whole picture, you know, you have to have a portrait of a, of a real human being at the center of something like that, or it's just, um, it, it's useless, you know? Um, when, I yeah. hear, when I hear you talk about that with such passion and such honesty, um, it just makes me think about you doing this forever. Do you have a long game in mind here? Are you taking it day by day? I mean, Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a lifer. Yeah, this is, yeah, it's really, I, I mean, You've seen me doing, you know, I mean, it's just, there was just never any question. I mean, it's, as, it's, it's, it is incredibly bizarre that I have, I mean, I, I passed my own ambitions for a career or whatever, like miles and miles and miles ago, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that there's just a lot yeah, it's, in, it's inextricable from my life, not to be dramatic about it, but <laughs> if you remove it from my life, you just have a Riddler costume, you know? So, so much of it is, um, well, I'm, I'm not sure how I want to say this. So many of us, it's a universal thing for us to have self-critics. And mm. I'm wondering if you're able to mm. in, enjoy this as much as you'd like to, are you able to quiet a critic as you age, as, as you gain experience? Yeah, I have, um, again, the, well, there you hear a lot of my self-criticism in my music, which is sort of this way of making it far less monstrous, you know? And when you look at it, um, you know, like I'm making this record right now that is, a, a lot of it is kind of dealing with my, with depression, like things that I haven't ever really written about before. And it's turning out to be just this really, funny, like very just kind of funny, upbeat record. <laughs> and it's because when you, when you take something like depression and you try to look at it objectively or something, it, be, it becomes, it's pretty funny. It becomes like a very funny sort of bizarre, it, it, it brings oxygen to the thing, you know? Um, and that is... I think in some ways what I was doing with this record was this, this sort of, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, America, and, and you know, I feel like I make, I've been making a lot of apologies sort of for the fire and brimstone aspects of the record, but I mean, America is a stupider, meaner place than I've ever seen it in my lifetime, and this record could be a hundred times more, like, judgmental, and it would, it would be fine. Yes, um, you and, can stop apologizing. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> and like... There's, but there, uh, in that same way, there's something about when you bring something out into the open and you demystify it, you, you, can, you, you can have some perspective on its absurdity. And that's what I think freedom looks, that's what freedom looks like for me. So that's how I, you know, all of this is about being free. It's about getting free. That's what music is about. It's what it's been about since I was a kid. When I had this, this suspicion that like, if you wrote something down, it was, it was yours. It couldn't be taken from you. And in an, in an environment, growing up in an environment where there was no, um, where so much was, was impermissible, you know, and so, many, so much was, I mean, it was very, you know, thought policey and stuff. But I had this suspicion that like, if you, if it, if you could get it down on a page, then it was yours and you could never get that toothpaste back in the tube, you know? And so it's always been about freedom, you know? So I would hope that when people listen, my, 
my hope is just that if pe when people listen to it, they just feel a little bit of freedom because, you know, something's been made less monstrous, you know? I think that honesty really speaks to people and that goes back to the art versus entertainment. I think these music will have lasting effect and, you know, a lot of people think you wrote this record about the election, but these songs are very timely. They were written before the results yeah. of the election. Yeah, I mean, it, it really was kind of... Um, I just felt like it was time to... to I, I felt like I had the clarity and the my writing was in a place where I could finally like address some of these things I've been thinking about my whole life you know or like this worldview that has kind of been percolating my whole life you know and I think people you know it's important to note like I don't think that anything about the perspective on this record is like objectively true or or reality it is it is like and that's why a song like leaving LA is in the record it's like this is this is the this is the perspective of one person who had a certain type of experience who started to view the world this way, you know, and uh, we're so didactic now, you know, like it's just like everything has to be like everything's a think piece now, you know. It's it's just yeah. In, in some ways, it's probably the most personal record, my most personal record, you know. It feels like each time you make a record, you say that, and that's, that seems like a good direction to be heading in. Father John Misty is live with us here in the KEXP studios. We're streaming live video at KEXP's Facebook page tonight, playing a big show at the Paramount Theater. I'd love for you to play another song, but I want to ask you real quickly, since we're talking about the Paramount show, I talked to you some time ago, and you were thinking of presenting... Oh, um, the musical? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm not... I'm not doing that. I, I, I like the idea of it going through your head, though. Just yeah. describe it for, for a minute. Well, I, uh, there were a lot of, um, a lot of costumes. Um, I played the role of uh, Josh Tillman, and then I had, like, six dancers who uh, at different times in the show played the role of like Father John Misty. And then there was like, we were talking to like unions, trying to get like children actors to play like child Josh Tillman. And at the end of it, I like put Father John Misty and child Josh Tillman in a boat and watched them drown. And like, that's the grand, and then the curtain falls, you know? I mean, it was just completely absurd. It was, it was very, it, it was uh, maybe too, too, uh, uh, but I don't know. I mean. It'll make a great coffee table book. Someday. I was just going to say, yeah. at least you can publish the storyboards and maybe on the 20th anniversary yeah. tour of Pure oh Comedy, you can do that. Yeah, it was like, I mean, we were really far along. We were having production meetings, like chiffon banana peel costumes were being made. I'm feeling like uh, Sub Pop was all in on this. Yeah, well, it was going to cost like $800,000. Oh, until to, you got to that part. So I was like taking meetings with like Red Bull and like, <laughs> <laughs> Goldman Sachs. Uh, but yeah, it, someday. Someday. Maybe. Yeah. Father John Misty live on KEXP. Oh, I'll let you say this title. That's very long. It would have been helpful to know before the revolution. Oh, yeah. This is called Things That Would Have Been Helpful to Know Before the Revolution. Got too hot, and so we overthrew the system. Cause there's no place for human existence like right here. On this bright blue marble, orbited by trash. Man, there's no beating that. It was no big thing up the way of life we had oh, 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 oh. my social life is now quite a bit less hectic the 
nightlife and the protests are pretty scarce. Now mostly spend the long days walking through the city. Sometimes I miss the top of the food chain But what a perfect afternoon started dropping me ice flows began to freeze from time to time we all get a bit restless with no one advertising to us constantly but the tribe at the former airport some nights has been dancing if you don't mind gathering and hunting we're all still pretty good at eating on the run Things that would have been helpful to know before the revolution Though I'll admit some degree of resentment for the sudden lack of convenience around here But there are some visionaries among us Developing some products To aid us in a struggle to survive On this godless rock that refuses to die Whew. Father John Misty live in the KEXP studios songs from the new album Pure Comedy it's your third release on Sub Pop Records you also worked with our sweetheart friend Jonathan Wilson again mm -hmm. on this record and I read somewhere that you have a fourth, maybe even a fifth record, partially, maybe even <laughs> close yeah. to done? Um, I was working on it this week. Yeah, it, I, the cycles are, I mean, the release cycles are sort of misleading, you know, because, I mean, I, f I finished these songs quite a while ago, so what else am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a birthing of a baby. Yeah. It just dates for some period of time. Yeah, more smoking. <laughs> I have a very silly question, but so many people would be so excited to meet Father John Misty. You're famous now. And I, I, I think of all um, of the wonderful opportunities that you have now that you have entree into uh, this world. And I'm curious if you have had any bizarre experiences or just sort of wide-eyed that, you know, young Josh Tillman would say, wow, I just did mm. this with this right. person. 
one time I uh, was walking into a hotel in Los Angeles and, and somebody went, Josh. I turned around and it was Steve Buscemi. And he was like, let's find some action. <laughs> so I took B Steve Buscemi to a party. That, I think, I think that's it. Yeah, that'll do <laughs> it's it. my incredible story. <laughs> that is an incredible story. <laughs> we won't make you go into detail what happened yeah. at a party with Steve Buscemi. I also, like, every morning that gold water comes out of my sink, I'm, I just can't, I cannot believe it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Mm -hmm, yeah. Father John Misty live here in the KEXP studios. And if we can just squeeze one last yeah. song out of you. Naturally, the dying man wonders to himself His commentary being more lucid than anybody else And had he successfully beaten back the rising tide Of idiots, dilettantes and fools Of on his watch while he was alive Lord, just a little more Naturally, the dying man Just think of all the overrated hats running amok And all of the pretentious, ignorant voices that will go unchecked The homophobes, hipsters, and one percent The false feminists he managed to detect who will critique them once he's
Oh, that is stunningly beautiful, as is the entire record, Pure Comedy. Father John Misty is live here in the KEXP studios. Josh and John, thank you so much. Thanks, Cheryl. We love you so much, and we are so proud I of love you. you guys so much. It's, a, it's, a, it's an honor, <laughs> truly. Thank you so much for yeah. including us on this amazing journey. We look forward to so much more. Enjoy this tour. Right. It's such a beautiful album. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, here in the studio. Yes, thank you for, for playing for our studio audience. <laughs> You've got a tune to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at kexp.org.